السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله في إنجليز بانكو هذا يا محايا لحمد الله يا دولة بلن حمد الله بلن عماشة فاليو إلي وقد إنجليز بلن في المركة Kerana nak dapat kalau nak Inggris ke, pokoknya Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala reminds us in the Quran. Allah reminds us in the Quran that there are those who worship Him and they forsake their beds. When Allah says, "تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجع يدعون ربهم خوفا وطمعا." ومما رزقناهم ينفقون الله سبحانه وتعالى says they say they forsake their beds they invoke their Lord in fear and hope and they spend in charity out of what we have bestowed upon them why does Allah سبحانه وتعالى mention that these people forsake their beds meaning that in the middle of the night when you are you and I are enjoying our bed they forsake their beds. For whom? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do they forsake their beds? They're hoping in the meeting of Allah and the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about for those who believe in Him. For those who expect to have a meeting with Him on the day of judgment. And Allah again in so many verses, He says that those who believe in Him are expecting this meeting. Now, you and I every single day we wake up, we raise a family in the hope of having a brighter future. We go to school in the hope of having a brighter future. The farmer plants his seed in the hope of getting a result. The mother feeds her baby in the hope that this baby will grow up and will benefit her. The doctor that we go to when we're sick when he gives us a bitter medicine, we take that medicine in the hope that we will become better. Now this is what happens. As humans, we have to have hope. Hope for a brighter future. But at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that we should have hope in Him and in the hereafter. Sometimes in life, we go through so many struggles. We go through so many trials. At one time it was said that there was a father he was traveling with his daughter. And as they were, tra as they were traveling, it started, started to rain. And it was raining so hard that they could not see what was ahead of them. They could not see what was ahead of them. And as the girl was driving, the father tells her, continue on driving. She says, but father, I cannot see much. He says, continue driving. She drives. And as she drives, it gets worse. And the father says, do not stop, continue, move on. And as she moves, she looks around and she sees a big truck staying on, you know, pulling off. The father says, do not go on. She sees other cars, men, women, people, different people driving. What does the father say? Continue, drive. And she drives. And then towards the end, she reaches the end of the rain, and she comes out. And it, as they drive, the father says, now stop. When she stops, he says, look back. What do you see? We've left that rain. We've left that storm. But those who are bigger than you, those who are stronger than you, are still stuck in that rain. What happens? The father had hope that there was a brighter future, that if he continues to drive, he would leave and he will exit, that there is a better, a, a brighter future. Had he given up, what would have happened to him? He would have sat, they would have sat there, perhaps he would have reigned for a long time. But this is the hope that the human has. That as we sit here, every single person is hoping, every day that you play this particular game that we're going to be playing soccer, why do you play? Why do you practice in the hope that you will be the winner? But do you know that you will win? You don't, but you still play. Why? You still have that hope 
that you will win. Some of us, we wake up every single day. We go to work. Why do we go to work? In the hope that at the end of the week, or at the end of two weeks, we'll get a paycheck. This is the hope that the human has. Now, let's ask, let's ask ourselves, what has happened to us when it comes to having hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Hope in the hereafter. Do we put the same effort in hoping to have a meeting with our Creator? The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they would travel from Mecca all the way to Medina. Why? What was pushing them? For those who went there, you will see nothing but desert, nothing but mountains, and the sun is right up here. But what did they do? They'll travel for hours and hours in the hope of getting reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet that was sent to us, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he left from Mecca, he went to Ta'if. You know how long the travel is? 60 miles. He goes and travels 60 miles. Takes him, but think about 36 hours. He gets there. He calls to those people to come to Islam. What do they do to him? They stone him until to the point that the Prophet Muhammad is bleeding and the blood is reaching to his legs. Right there and then, when he turns back and he's coming back to Mecca, who comes to him? Jibreel comes to him. And he says, should I destroy these people who have done this to you? What does the Prophet say? He says that perhaps I'm hoping in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that from the backs of people, these people will come, people who believe in Allah. The Prophet could have taken revenge from them, but he did not. He was having, he was having hope in Allah, having hope in, the, in a brighter future. Brothers and sisters, if you look at the animals, they've done an experiment. They've taken a rat. They took the rat and put it in water. And it stayed in the water for 10, 5 to 10, some experiments said, to 16, 17 minutes. The rat was in distress, and it found that perhaps it was drowning and there was no hope. What did the rat do? It said, forget it, there's nothing ahead. All I could see is drowning. I might as well just give up, it drowned. Another rat, they took it, and they put it in the water. What did they do? They said, okay, fine, we know that it will give up five to 17 minutes. When it is about to drown, let's take it out. What did they do? They took it out. And they said, let us put it back now that it has hope. How many more minutes or hours or days do you think that rat stayed in the water hoping that it will be saved? Some experiment said 36 hours. Hoping that it will be saved. Some experiment, 60 hours. If this is what hope has done to an animal, what is hope doing to us when it comes to our normal affairs? What is hope doing to us when it comes to our hereafter? Are we waking up for Fajr in the hope that Allah will reward us? Are we abandoning our sins in the hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us? And I'd like to remind you to conclude my talk with this. The believer, why does he have hope in Allah? Because the believer is not this. For this, for this believer and those who do not believe in Allah, all they can see is this. They do not know what is behind this hand. They do not see the audience in front of them. They do not see the vision in front of them. So how do they act? All they can think is what they see. For the believer, this is removed. He sees death is in front of him. He sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will meet him. He sees that the grave, which is dark, is in front of him. He knows that the angels that are on his shoulders will take an account and they will write every single thing that he says. So what does the believer do? He has hope for certainty. We are hoping, we're having, we're having hope in something that is not even certain. We go to school, not even knowing if we will graduate. Perhaps we will die. Maybe the university will get destroyed. Maybe you will not have money, but you'll still have that hope. How about when it comes to the hereafter, that you and I know that every single person sitting here will die. You and I know an uncle, an aunt, an, a grandfather, a father who has died, and we have seen him being taken to the grave. So what do we do for the sake of Allah? What do we do in having hope in Allah? There's a disease called ghafla, and I hope that every single person 
could go and read about it. What happens is that those who have no hope, those who lose hope, what happens to them is a disease called ghafla, heedlessness. So inshallah, let, let that happen to us. There are so many verses that I do not want to go through that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us when people lose hope in Him, they turn to sin. The brothers who are sitting in the shisha in the middle of the night, they're not hoping for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why had they been hoping Allah? They would know there will, there, will, there will be an accountability. For those who are sitting against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds us that the sins are temporary. Repent. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always willing to accept you back. So brothers and sisters, let's have, let us have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah make us among those who forsake their beds in the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.